have been waiting about an hour for the landscapers across the road to leave. That said, you girls can have a banging thumbnail because I have plenty of time to do that. Welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Pam. I have lots of plants and that's pretty much what I talk about here, about planting indoors and out. We're growing inside, we're growing outside, we're growing for pollinators, we're growing for our own sanity during the collapse of the apparent world. Growing because therapy is expensive. <laughs> Today on my channel, I'm gonna to talk to you about plant books, planty reads, plant related things, botanical books. I have books about indoor gardening, outdoor gardening, and some things to just fill your mind with inspiration and information and just turn your passion into something that you know a little bit about. You can wow your friends at parties with your botanical knowledge, or your friends will stop inviting you to parties. But then you just get to spend more time with your plants, so it's fine. I don't go to parties anymore. First, because I know where most of my people out there came from, we're going to talk about the indoor books, the houseplant books. Now, I admit I don't have a lot of these because every time I had gone previously to buy planty books, it was always for outdoor gardening. Um, I've had houseplants for a very long time, probably about 15, 16 years now. Um, oh, actually longer. Oh God, I'm so old. Um, so let's just go with longer. Um, but I never thought to get books about houseplants. I just figured you water them until they inevitably die. And then none of them ever really did. So I just figured I knew everything about houseplants. <laughs> False. So the first book I want to show you, I learned about on the On The Ledge podcast, which if you don't listen to that podcast and you are an indoor plant enthusiast, what are you doing with your life? That is The House Plant Expert. So this is a full color, really beautiful book and it is packed with information. Now, my problem with a lot of gardening books, both indoor and out, is that a lot of times most of the book is just a page by page summary of each plant and it's really just like basic information. And I feel like once you have one of those books, you don't really need that many more. Um, so that's kind of what this book is to me because that is what this book is. It's basically like a smaller encyclopedia of houseplants. So you can look up any plant that you have. It's gonna tell you the Latin name. It's gonna tell you the secrets of success, it will say. Your temperature, your light, your water, your fertilizing, all that information is like in this book. And this is really, as far as I'm concerned, the only book of this nature that I really need right now, but that's not the only thing in it. There are also these really great photos that are just sort of like date the book a little bit, but are very cool to look at. And if you updated the clothing and the decor just a little bit, are so close to what's on Instagram right now, it's just kind of funny how things come around like that. There's also obviously information on repotting, on what to do about pests, and just your basic plant information. So I really think as like the foundational house plant book, you really can't beat this one. And they also have a second version. So this one just goes a little bit further into more house plants that weren't included in the first version. There's also a section on herbs and other things that weren't in the first book. So it's just kind of a complimentary book to the first one. I don't think that you necessarily need it, but I grabbed this on eBay for like $3, so. And all of the books that I mentioned will be linked down below. Those are Amazon links, but I'm, I'm even though those are like Amazon affiliate links, I'm literally telling you go to eBay first. You'll probably get it cheaper there. I won't be mad, trust me. I am not good at capitalism. Next indoor gardening book that I wanna to talk to you about is probably a little expected at this point, but I honestly think that this is such a beautiful book. And it's not just because there's a little excerpt from yours truly in there. Top of page 45. How to Make a Plant Love You by Summer Rain Oaks is part how to and part why to. This book is a love letter to houseplants. So if you are the kind of person that has their houseplants, that talks to their houseplants, maybe you gender your houseplants, 
I'm not judging you. It's something that I feel like only Summer Rain could have written because she, her passion for plants, it spills out of her on her channel. And the information is like science-based, it's in-depth, but it's also such an accessible book because it, it talks so much from the heart about plants and about why you want to provide the best environment for them so that they in turn like provide this great environment for you. Anyway, you killed it, Summer Rain. Thank you so much for including my little blip in there. Little bit of a summer stan. Just a little bit. So the next category that I wanna talk about is the outdoor gardening books. And I could fill this, uh, we could talk for days because I have so many outdoor gardening books and I find them all pretty helpful in their own way. But there are a few that really stand out to me. Um, one is a newer book that I really enjoyed reading. And the other two are more classic books. They are just packed with information. It's not that like first page of Google generic like info that you can get on the internet. I think that's really important when you're writing books now is to understand that people can get the answers to their questions within seconds on the internet. So you need to offer something else when you're giving them a book. So these are books that I feel like are really worth flipping through a book instead of just quickly Googling the question that you have. This is Square Foot Gardening by Mel Bartholomew, and this is like one of the go-to manuals that I find a lot of people in gardening groups and you know forums talking about. Um, and I, since rereading it again, like really understand why. It, what this book is about is about the square foot gardening method, which if you don't know what that is, it's basically making four foot by four foot beds, and then you're dividing the beds into squares that are one foot by one foot and then you're able to put, based on planting distance, um, different plants in each one, and then as you harvest them, you're then able to plant something else in that square with the idea that you will be continuously harvesting from this small and easy to manage garden. It's sort of a no-till method as well, if you've heard of that. Mel goes through the different problems that he ran into as a gardener using more traditional methods, and then what he feels like his method brings to the table in terms of solving those problems. My camera needs to just calm down. Just kind of, kind of, like, I know I'm white, but. So I definitely highly recommend this book, especially if you're just getting into gardening outside or you're jumping back in like me. This is going to be a method that I use when I put in my first raised bed in the lot next door, which of course I will show you guys because nobody else will listen to me talk about this stuff. <laughs> And like I said, the books are linked down below. Another tip besides eBay, go to the library. It's free. And my next book, because I am possibly extremely biased towards YouTubers, The Field Guide to Urban Gardening by Kevin Espiritu of Epic Gardening here on YouTube. He's also got a podcast and is very active on Instagram. If you've ever interacted with Kevin, you know he's a friendly guy, he's a very knowledgeable guy, and he's always happy to talk to his subscribers and people with questions about everything, and it really shows in this book because this book isn't a vanity project like a lot of, you know, like influencer books can tend to be. This is genuinely him putting everything he knows in the simplest format possible in a very visually attractive book so that you can try all different kinds of gardening while living in the city. And you get to see baby Kevin. A lot of you know I'm a photographer as my main job, that's what I do. So beautiful images are really important to me when I'm buying a book like this, because again, you can get a lot of information on the internet. You know, I don't need to buy a physical book for a lot of things, but I feel like when they look like this, when they feel nice, and when they are packed with incredibly helpful charts and information, and the photographs aren't there just to be pretty, they're also very functional in explaining further what Kevin is talking about. So it's just a really approachable book, and I think it's an excellent thing to pick up if you're just starting this kind of gardening. So while I'm not totally unbiased because Epic Gardening was one of the first gardening-related channels I started watching on YouTube, and Kevin and I occasionally debate the collapse of society and what is causing it. Yeah! You can take it as my professional opinion that this is a really good book. So the last book I want to talk about is The Four Season Harvest, and this is by Elliot Coleman. This is one of those older books. It's not super old, but it's been around for a little while, and it is extremely detailed, lots of charts, lots of graphics, and it entirely focuses on how to expand your growing season 
two, four complete seasons. Even if you're in the Northeast like me, you can use cold frames and greenhouses and all kinds of things to really expand your grow season beyond the one that is easy just to put outside, you know, after and before the frost. And if you're like me, and even the thought of winter just makes you want to throw yourself off a bridge, this kind of thing is great because I need projects in the winter or mama gonna go crazy. So now that we've touched on some of those educational books, I'm gonna quickly just run through some other books just for when you wanna turn your brain off a little bit, but also indulge in plenty botanical thoughts. The first book, and I read this this year recently, is The Revolutionary Genius of Plants, and it's by someone called Stefano Mancuso. This book is funny, it's easy to read, and it is incredibly interesting. This is one of those books that I took out from the library and then I went on to Amazon and I bought a copy for myself because I just wanted to have it on hand. My ADD doesn't always let me reread entire books, but I do like to reread certain parts of books and then have them on hand to talk about and stuff like this. I used to loan books, but people don't give them back. And then I have to cut them off. A lecture chair. What I love about this book is it will really take away what plant enthusiasts call plant blindness. And that is where we just look at plants as these things, they're just out there, they're just existing, and we don't think a whole lot beyond that. But this book talks about how plants have evolved and adapted to survive, the traits that they've taken on, the pest fighting that they're able to do, the communication that they can have. And do they have memories and can they move without muscles and all it's just really interesting so if you really want to take your awe and respect of the plant world to another level i highly recommend this book i just finished this book last month and i loved it it was actually a really fast read it's not incredibly technical so if you're looking for more of a guide on how to plant for pollinators and things like that this is a good place to start but it's not a how-to manual per se, more of a collection of essays and interviews with other gardeners about planting for pollinators and how they've adjusted their expectations in their gardens to complement and enhance the wildlife around them rather than constantly fighting animals for, you know, cherry tomatoes or whatever. This book really focuses on reminding people that we are here to share the environment we are not here to control it and sometimes our methods of control are really damaging and can really hurt the environment so this book is sort of a plea as well as a encouragement to consider the native wildlife when you're making your gardens outside Right now I'm reading this book called Weeds in Defense of Nature's Most Unloved Plants. So I'm pretty excited to dip into this and, you know, maybe change my perspective on um, weeds. I'm already a big fan of one. So that's all I got for you guys today. If you watched this far, thank you so much for watching my videos. Let me know if you liked the video by giving it a thumbs up or give a thumbs down if you didn't like it. You won't hurt my feelings, I promise. And if you've read anything that you think me or some of the other commenters should read, let us know down below. So I hope you guys will hit the subscribe button, come back for the next video, and I'll see you guys soon. Happy planting. See you later.